This video is on how to detect cavitation in a hydraulic pump. Before determining whether your pump is cavitating or not, it is important to understand what exactly cavitation is. Cavitation is when pump inlet vacuum is high enough to cause vapor-filled cavities to form in the fluid. When the fluid is pressurized, these cavities collapse, causing severe localized shock and heat damage to the metal surfaces. The effects of cavitation are readily found on the pump outlet ports where the air is forced back into the fluid under extreme forces. These forces erode pump materials, eventually destroying the pump. Another effect of cavitation is interference with lubrication inside the pump. Air pockets get between moving parts, allowing metal-to-metal -metal contact, thus increasing your friction and increasing your heat. Prior to creating an inlet restriction on this pump, Let's get a few background readings while the pump is operating under normal working conditions. Under normal operating conditions, this pump has a vacuum of three inches of mercury. We're also able to see the pump inlet, as well as the pump outlet. Our normal operating temperature, and our normal operating pressure which is around 310 PSI. Now let's create a restriction on the inlet side of the pump in order to determine what effect cavitation has on the system. Take note of the change in sound that the pump is now making. This agitated sound is created by those now vapor-filled cavities making their way to the discharge side of the pump, forced to implode on their way out. Now let's take a look at the visual signs cavitation has on my system. On my vacuum gauge, where I started off with 3 inches of mercury, I'm now at almost 16 inches of mercury. My pump inlet line, I can see the vapor making its way to the suction side of the pump. I can see the condition of the fluid as it leaves my pump. And on my system pressure gauge, where I started with almost 310 PSI, I'm now just over 200 PSI. Because I'm creating a restriction to the inlet side of the pump, I'm gonna to start to see an increase in temperature. Where I started with 87 degrees, only a short amount of time, I'm already at almost 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that the pump has been cavitating for a few moments, we can see the effects it has had on the fluid as it returns back to the reservoir, which is now almost completely filled with the vapor-filled cavities, ultimately returning back to the suction side of the pump and repeating the cycle all over again. Now let's open up the restriction. Almost immediately, we can hear the dramatic decrease in agitated sounds coming from the pump. Both vacuum and pressure gauges have returned back to their normal operating condition, and over time, I should start to see my fluid temperature decrease. Common causes for cavitation include clogged strainers for your pump, clogged reservoir vent caps, causing you to pull a larger vacuum due to not allowing atmospheric pressure to enter the reservoir. Fluid viscosity could be too high or fluid could be too thick. It could be the wrong type of fluid. Fluid could be too cold or you could have an improper suction line. Common indications include the noise of your pump, higher vacuum, or even low pressure. This now concludes the tutorial on how to identify cavitation in a hydraulic system.